this is the blocks editor. Just to refresh our memory, if we click on the designer button up here in the upper right, we'll go back to the designer. And you can go back at any point and add more things, change things in the designer, um, and then you can always go back to the blocks. So in the blocks, we have a couple of different panels or windows. The blocks panel over here gives you access to all the different blocks that are available to you. The built-in blocks are th things like uh, conditional blocks, which are if-then-elses, four blocks, which are loops, and these are all blocks that control the flow of a program. Logic blocks, which are used with, usually with if blocks to test things, math blocks to do mathematical calculations, text blocks, etc. So we have a whole bunch of built-in blocks. There's so many blocks here and you won't use the majority of them, but they're available to you. If you look down here below the built-in blocks, you note that all of the components that are part of your app show up here. And that is because every component has its own set of blocks that are specific to it. Uh, labels mostly have just setting some of its properties and getting their properties. We're going to be pressing buttons to interact with our game, so our three buttons, uh, and they each have these gold event blocks, and we're going to be concerned with the clicking of buttons. So the proper uh, the buttons all have similar blocks, and then as well the clock. So we mentioned that the plan for the game is that uh, every five seconds a new image will appear, and so we want to use the clock timer. Below the blocks window is the media window, so this is the same set of media that, that shows up in the designer. So you can access these files from within the blocks editor as well as uploading new files if you need them. In the viewer is where you will develop your blocks. Uh, so for instance we're going to start with a when recycle button click, so all you do is drag the block into the viewer. It doesn't matter where you have it in the viewer, anywhere works. It doesn't really matter the order uh, of where blocks are. So for instance, if I have the compost button above this or below it, it does not matter. It's usually good to organize them for yourself so that they're easy for you to read and find. Other things, this is the backpack and the way the backpack works is if I drop something into the backpack, it, it now shows that there's something in there and I can access that block again. Generally, you use the backpack to move blocks between different projects. So, for instance, if I were to create code in my recycle game and I wanted to reuse it in a new game that I was using, I could drag the blocks into the backpack and then drag them back out again. Obviously, I don't need this here. Um, other things you can do, you can zoom in by hitting on the plus button and the minus button. If you hit this target button, it just goes back to normal size. And then, of course, you have a trash bucket, so you can drag your blocks and remove them. The other thing you can do is right-click and you can say delete block. If I drag out a new one, uh, you can just usually just hit the delete key as well. So you can get rid of blocks. You can also undo, so uh, it's either Command-Z on a Mac or Control-Z on a PC to undo your last action. Down here in the bottom left, this will show any errors you have. So if, if anything shows up in the red, your app won't run because of those errors. On the left side, the yellow, that means there's warnings. It will still run, but you should you, you should try to fix those errors. So for instance, if I dragged out a second recycle, note that now we have two errors because I'm not allowed to have two one recycle button dot click blocks. The app wouldn't know which one to run. So once I get rid of it, now I have no errors. That gives you a general sense of uh, the different parts of the blocks editor. So let's go ahead and get down to coding it.